Uh, so thank you very much. My name is Katherine Davis, as I've been introduced, and uh, in Honey Harbor, people sometimes refer to me as the Frag Queen, which is quite, a, quite, a, quite an honorable uh, title on occasion, I guess. Um, how did I get involved with Frag Mighty? Well, my great-grandfather bought a little island in uh, Honey Harbor in Georgian Bay. For those of you who aren't familiar with Honey Harbor, it's at the south end, a very small community, mostly water access properties. So I grew up playing on this beautiful little beach with lots of snakes and turtles and frogs and that kind of thing. And uh, you know, that wonderful environment that so many of us are familiar with. Uh, if we fast forward, so fast forward to, this is actually 2010. This is my beautiful little beach. Uh, it's just on the side of our co cottage property and we started to notice this grass that looked kind of pretty initially but eventually just started to take over the whole beach and created this big wall and it certainly strangled out every other native plant in sight. So I figured I'd better try to, to um, do a little bit of eradication myself and proceeded to try every, every possible manner that you shouldn't do. So I cut it, I pulled it, I torped it, and this thing just kept coming back bigger and stronger every single year. So I thought, you know, I've really got to figure this out. So if we get to um, year, I guess it was 2014, I joined the board of our, of our cottage association, and I went to the first demonstration that Georgian Bay Forever put on, uh, learning how to cut the frag lighty. So we went to the demonstration in 2014 that was in the Honey Harbor Town Center. And then in 2015, as we learned more about it, we engaged some of our community members. Um, yes, looking at the scale of it was pretty, pretty scary once you're aware of it and we start to see it everywhere, as all of you did. Um, so in 2015, See if I'm on the right side. Yep, David came up to Honey Harbor and brought his magic cutter. And we worked on four sites actually and learned again about how to, how to properly eradicate it. We were also very fortunate that we got um, support from a local contractor who donated a, um, a barge, a bin, and he actually took it all away and burned it. But as you can see, it took quite a few volunteers eight volunteers and over six hours um, in the water just to sort of deal with this one stand. So realizing that the problem was rather huge, we had to figure out some augmentation and that's when we really started to um, work with our association and Georgian Bay Forever to develop a program. And so I guess it was in 2016 was our first year where we hired two students and worked with Georgia Bay Forever, and our students really um, started with mapping, so determining the whole scope of the problem was the first, uh, first priority. We also did an incredible amount of education. The kids knocked on the doors, or actually docks, went to the docks, particularly anybody who was there, but particularly uh, the property owners that had the frag mighty on their shores. So they educated the property owners about what it was, how to get rid of it, that kind of thing. So we were very focused on um, in, um, creating that awareness, the education, uh, developing a plan, and we organized a couple of large community cuts, and then of course helped with a lot of people who weren't physically able to come on to cut themselves. Um, from there, as we move forward, um, we had last year up to six students in the Honey Harbor area, two of our own, but six that worked with us in Honey Harbor. We had partnerships with um, the township, more local businesses, of course we had lots of financial support from the Honey Harbor Association, which helped. Um, and we also um, received funding from FOCA. We've actually received grants two years in a row from them, so who were also financial partners in this process. Um, if you have a quick look here, you can see some of the progression of what's happened. So in 2015, we worked on four stands. In 2016, the first year with our students, there were 40 stands treated. 
Um, in 2017, there were 71 stands that we cut down. It's a huge amount of work, huge amount of people, um, and you can see our map over there. I think it is, yeah, in Honey Harbor, we had 154 sites identified, so it's a huge problem. I mean, it's very recognizable, but you could start it, you could start to see some of the successes in 2018. There was about 20, uh, was it about 23% of the stands did not come back. So we could start to see lots of areas where they weren't coming back and see some huge successes. But we also were dealing with some pretty big, huge stands that there was absolutely no way that just um, volunteers could really tackle it. So that's where Georgia Bay Forever has really been huge partners with us in terms of coming to work with us on these big, big stands that there's absolutely no way we could have tackled on our own. So you need those partnerships. Um, Two of the huge stands that we tackled last summer, one of them was called Wild Goose Island, which was a huge cut. You can see the picture on the top. During that cut, you can see the after picture, you know, significant results right away. We also had a huge pro program in September where Georgia Bay came in, Georgia Bay Forever came in with a truck SAR, which is a big machine that mulches and cuts the frag. So this lily pond, uh, Lil Lily Pond Bay area is sort of at the gateway to Honey Harbor. So we have been seeing this huge stand of there and watching all the seeds continue to blow out into the bay. So we're sort of feeling this was a huge area we needed to deal with because we were tackling all these little stands that this big guy was continuing to sort of pollute our area. So they've just um, cut that stand and cut what I would describe as some pretty significant amounts of frag mighty. There were more than 40,000 kilograms of frag mighty removed in 2018. Can't even imagine or visualize what that looks like, but huge, <coughs> huge amounts. Um, so that was hugely successful. Um, what are some of the things, I'm just gonna wrap up with some of the things that can be learned from our successes, and we have had huge successes, we have. But we've learned that you have to be really diligent. Um, early detection is really the most important thing. So you've got to get on it right away. Uh, having had that experience from my own beach, you've got to get on it right away. You've got to stay on top of it. Um, you really need a, co a community leader. Um, uh, the community will get very excited, at least ours did initially, going to the association meetings and everybody gets quite excited, they get educated, everybody's coming out, and then there's no doubt, of, no doubt about the fact that now we see a little bit of decline in that enthusiasm or excitement. So that's a challenge that you have to continue to work with, so the community leadership is very important in continuing to try to generate that enthusiasm. Um, the selective cut absolutely does work, but it's not a one-time fix, and I think that's one of the frustrations sometimes with, with the community, that they're not seeing the results as fast as they might like to. Um, it's a huge multi-year commitment, uh, yeah, a lot of ongoing physical participation, um, uh, so that's where you have to just be vigilant with the community. So. In, in summary, you really have to sort of figure out what the scope of the problem is in your area and then figure out how you're going to get the help you need and where you're going to get the help you need to help uh, work with your community to eradicate uh, the frag bite. And just as a last slide, uh, I'd like to show you what my shoreline looks like now. You saw the slide at the beginning. So here we are, that's a little fuzzy looking, but uh, that's my shoreline today, and you can see we've restored it to sort of the natural biodiversity and the natural plant.